Hello, uh, welcome to the New Orleans Jazz Museum. On behalf of New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, we're so delighted to have this partnership uh, with our state museum. Um, you're here tuned into our weekly sh show and set with the Arrowhead Jazz Band. This is a band comprised of park rangers like myself and local jazz museum musicians. The mission of our park is to instill a public appreciation for New Orleans music, culture, and history. And we have these programs here for you, and they're free. And uh, we just love to share our resources to people that come to our city. And so today we have a wonderful set list that's centered around um, songs that have street names. Some of the songs uh, reflect street names in New Orleans and outside of New Orleans. So we're going to get started with this set. We're going to introduce the band up and I hope you enjoy this show. Before we get started though, please silence your cell phones or any chatty devices so you don't interrupt your neighbor. Without further ado, let's introduce the band. We have Hunter Miles Davis on drums. Uh -huh. And we're the two rangers for today. Normally there's three, uh, but he's taking care of another performance down at our site at 916 North Peters. Uh, but we have a guest today, and that is Ted Long on bass. Um, Dylan Torrance on guitar. And a wonderful horn player, trumpet, and a fugal horn, uh, and vocalist, singer, Katie Rogers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And again, like I said, this um, set list is based on street names. So before we get into the, the actual street names, we're going to start on the sunny side of the street. Get your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on that doorstep. Just direct your feet on the sunny side of the street. Can't you hear that bit of pet? And that happy tune in your step and life can be so sweet not sour on the sunny side of the street I used to walk in the shade with my blues on bread but I'm not now I'm not afraid my brother just crossed over if I never had a cent. I'd be rich, I'd be riches, I'd be rich as Rockefeller with gold dust all on my feet. On the sun, sun side of the street. <laughs> Thank you. 
to walk in the shade with my blues on parade. But I'm not, I'm not afraid. My rubber just crossed over. If I never had a cent, I'd be rich as rock. All of my feet on the sunny, not cloudy but sunny, blue skies, it's just sunny, sunny, sunny side of the street. Awesome. If you walked over here from somewhere, it is definitely sunny. Oh my goodness. So it's very fitting for this weather. Um, so the next song we're going to get into is called Perdido, and I'll talk about it a little bit after. The day the fiesta started, oh, Bolero. We sweat as we dance to Bolero. I kiss me a handsome sombrero. The day the fiesta started, my heart, I lost it along the way. My heart somehow has gone astray, oh, Perdido. I lost it way down in Perdido. We dance as we go to Torito, the day the fiesta Bye-bye. 
Actually, it goes all the way back to uh, Jelly Roll Morton's day um, when on Perdido and Liberty Street there were a couple of clubs like Funky Butts, um, the, there was a Masonic Hall and another club and that's where a lot of mus musicians at the time around Jelly Roll Morton's age would play this style of music. So it's a pretty old tune and Perdido still exists. It's not in the same vein as it was um, during the early 1910s uh, and early 1900s, but it still is a place that you can like just go down and travel and see what's there. And so, yeah, that's pretty dope. And it literally translates in Spanish as lost. So the song is talking about how uh, this young, this uh, subject gets lost in the dance and get lo gets lost in the night. And you can easily get lost in New Orleans on one street, just going back and forth. Oh, where, where am I? <laughs> Such a small silly city, um, but yes. Now moving on to the next tune, what do we have? Basin Street. Won't you come along with me? We'll take a trip to the land of dreams, go down to New Orleans. The band is there to greet us. All folks to meet us. That is where the people meet. Come on down to New Orleans. Basin Street, Basin Street, Basin Street is the land of dreams where folks meet and you never know. Glad to be, yes siree, where all the welcome folks are dear to me, where I can lose my face and street blues. One more time. Yeah. I said base and street, base and street, where the land of dreams I get lost in my own city and you never know how pretty it is my 
Mardi Gras, oysters raw. We'll tell the people who we are, where I can lose my base and street blues. Katie Rogers, y'all. And that tune featured Katie Rogers on both horn and vocals. Yeah. Awesome. That's a lovely thing about New Orleans and our culture is that a lot of musicians either play two instruments or do multiple things or band leaders or wear so many hats, uh, literally and figuratively. And um, that's just what makes us so unique and different and pushing the envelope. So a little bit of history about Basin Street was it, it was an old um, station, rail, railway station. So Canal Street used to have tracks, there still are tracks there for the streetcars, but it was a popular port for people to come in and out of the city. There are still remnants of that station. There's the Basin Street, I believe it's a coffee shop, and it's made into an, uh, to a informative space if you wanna know about a Basin Street and then about New Orleans. So you can definitely check, check it out. You probably already know about it if you parked your RV there and toured around the French Quarter. So that's Basin Street. And we have one more song for you until we take a brief break and go into some more dialogue. This Bill Street is next. Not in New Orleans, but it's similar to a street down here. Talk. Mm. Merry men would have to take their beds and 
walk except one or two who never drink booze and the blind man on the corner who sings the Bill Street I know it's gonna take the sergeant to make me go. If Bill Street could talk, Bill Street to talk, and every man will have to take the best in the walk, except one or two. Okay, now this is what makes our programs, the Arrowhead Jazz Band, so different than Frenchmen, is that we somehow figure out a way to break music and just start talking. I don't know, I think that was uh, the National Park Service wanting to add more education, right? We're supposed to educate people. Um, but yeah, so seriously, we like to just answer any questions that you may have about National Park Service, about New Orleans, about this, un this ensemble, and yeah, we're, this is the time to do so. I know we get a lot of questions down at our site, which is at 916 North Peters. And I'll use this moment, since no one's raised their hand just yet, just to let you know we have 
a couple more programs for the rest of the month. And all of our shows are always at 2 p.m. And they're free. So we love to share our resources, like I said before. So yeah, any questions? I know I saw some. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm born and raised, I'm from New Orleans, although I really don't have this thick accent. Um, born and raised from New Orleans. And I went to uh, HBCU, Xavier University of Louisiana, and I studied music there. And so during my sophomore year, I think either sophomore, junior, or junior, or senior year, I did a internship with um, the Park Service. And uh, Hunter also did an internship with the Park Service, but he was at another school in uh, Hampton, Hampton University. And so during that internship, we had this qualification where that allowed us to get into the park service. So I could have chosen any other park, but I'm a musician, so it made sense to, to choose this park. And they were the only park that's dedicated to preserving, promoting, and protecting New Orleans music. So it just was at the right time. And I guess I am lucky being from New Orleans that it just made sense. All right. What's your question? How do we make music? Who that? I'm gonna let someone else answer that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pass it on. Katie, you take you take it. Oh, got it. Hey, what's your name? Conrad. Conrad? <laughs> Where are you from, Conrad? That's so cool. How long have you been here? Here in New Orleans. Cool. How did you know all the right words to say when I asked you those questions? Well, we're talking to each other, right? Okay. So we're sort of speaking a language to each other. The southern language? You've been here since Sunday. You've probably heard some southern language. But that's kind of how we play music. It's just a language like any other. Kind of like English or Spanish or... Uh, oh, it's kind of like a cultural Yeah, so we, we learn some of the vocabulary and some of the words and some of the sounds. And then we start conversing with each other. And at first, it doesn't sound like much when we're first learning. Just like when you're a baby and you learn to talk. It doesn't sound like much at first, but then you start to learn a few words and yeah, and you get used to it and you put it with the ideas in your head and all of a sudden you can make sense of it. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, good. Yes, gentlemen over here. And within our park. Um, well, so we are a part of interpretation. And interpretation is a large umbrella. Basically, it just means storytelling and taking stories that people may not know about and putting them in a way that people can learn and understand. Um, so my main job is to interpret New Orleans jazz music and put it through performances. But outside of that is a lot of trainings um, in whatever field I like. Um, that could be educational trainings or um, what's the most recent training I've, I've done? I don't know, so, something so random, like cybersecurity. Uh, just stuff like that. We do training or travel. We travel to other parks doing educational. I have just recently went to Springfield, Illinois, and led a workshop to young students teaching basic rhythms from, that come from New Orleans. Um, there's so much that go into the job that I, I can't think of right now, but I'm like, oh my gosh, why can't I just play music right now? Yeah. Yeah, that's just me, but there's also other rangers at our park that work in totally different divisions that I am not skilled in. So we're just two of a lot of park rangers. <laughs> yeah. The exact moment that we all fell in love with jazz. I'll let. You seem like you're ready to tell us, so. Yeah. Um, 
Let's, well, for me, I mean, it's going to be different for everyone, of course. But uh, for me, I was uh, I was in high school, I believe, and I was trying to go to NOCA, which is uh, New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. And I actually uh, I auditioned for classical guitar at the time, and uh, they told me that they didn't have a classical teacher, so I should go to the jazz program. <laughs> so <laughs> I I I love. <laughs> So I looked up some uh, jazz guitar, and I first thing I stumbled upon, I think, was Pat Martino, and he was just sh shredding some bunch of notes, and I was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't know about this. But uh, then I continued jumping into things, and I, I, I think one of the first guitar players I fell in love with was Joe Pass, and uh, yeah, so I just went from there. So I was in high school uh, whenever I started getting into it, but uh, yeah, does anyone else? Well, I did, you know, it just, you know, it took, a minute. <laughs> when I got my first check <laughs> for playing music and I saw how much money jazz musicians make and I saw how rich and wealthy I would be playing this music, that's when I fell in love with jazz. That, that's the best answer right there. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can come after that. You, you take, take one. Okay. Take one, yeah. Um, well, you know, growing up, uh, I don't, my parents played a lot of different kind of music and I don't ever think they told me, this is jazz, you know, they just played it. And um, so I heard, you know, everyone early on, my dad listened to a lot of Mose Allison. And when you're young, you know, you like sit in the car like, this is Mo, this is Mose Allison, and then that's Phil Collins, and like you know, like all, and that's Motown. I you know, I, as a kid, I was just hearing it, and um, but more on like the conscious level of like things people do. Um, you know, when I was a teenager, you know, being really cool and listening to Miles Davis and like um, staying up late and and all that. Um, I you know became more aware that there were jazz musicians, and that was a a, a specific style, and then. Moving here, I was 24 when I moved here. Like you know, going to Jazz Fest for the first time, it just kind of evolved. But but yeah, I, I there's no particular moment. But when I was a kid, I just you know it just got I just it was exposed to a lot of different music, and it just became more clear as time went on. You know. Um, I guess I'll give an answer that's better than how much money you can make. Um, I think I like I like going to the really nice venues and being dressed up in, I don't know, in nice attire and, and whatnot. But I think it's one of those genres where you can have these songs and have the liberty to express it however you want to. It doesn't have, it's not like pop. Well, pop, people, when people recognize tunes, you have to do it like that because if you don't, they're like, what is this? What did I come to pay and see for them not to do the, the right song? So with jazz, I can, take all of these songs, not that I want to, and put it in whatever form and find my voice in it. So that's kind of why I gravitated to jazz. And when was around high school, that's when I first started listening to Ella Fitzgerald. Like that's the first jazz singer. Then I went backwards. So yeah. Um, we'll take, I think we have time for one more question. All right, well, two, two will work. I see your hand first. Uh, specifically in New Orleans or just in New Orleans, Orleans premier gig, my show. I would do Snug. I would do Snug Harbor. Yeah. If I if I could do it, I would do it Snug Harbor. Are you asking? Do I have a Friday night show right now? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would. Right now it would be Snug. I have, that's hard to choose. I would just say Snug for right now. Um, yeah, if everyone else answered with different ones because there's so many venues in this space. Like this is probably one of the best spaces for like people to come and listen. It's a well, well taken care of venue. So if not, yeah, probably this space. Yeah, I changed my answer. <laughs> All right, did anyone else want to take that, or was it just directly directed at me? Well, uh, so 
I have a big band like Count Basie, and I, you know, I just wanted to mention to any Rangers that might be listening that if we could, or any people that work at the Jazz Museum, <laughs> it would be playing with my big band here. That would be that would be a blast and a half. Yeah, yeah just just put it out there. You gotta let folks know. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I t he's coming with all the good answers, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. What about you? Well, um, I can't speak for all, all of us, but we're all working musicians, so we all, you know, do this um, for a living, pretty much playing bands, playing in uh, different groups around town. Um, I teach, <coughs> excuse me, I teach a little bit as well, uh, like music, but um, yeah, I mean, we all play. Uh, do you guys have any other side hustles that you want to talk about? <laughs> I, I can paint houses if you need somebody. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I will say, uh, t just to go with that question, being a musician is a full-time job, well not job, but full-time career. It's never ending unless you decide to take a break um, and going, making sure that, just in general, uh, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but just from booking your own shows to making sure the band is taken care of, to getting together a set list, making sure you have the music for the set list, all of that, making sure that you have a promotion, promoting the gig so that people can come out. All of that goes into being a musician outside of just playing the instrument and showing up for the, the two o'clock performance. There's countless hours that go into, you know, being a musician day in and day out. So when you ask a question like, oh, what do you, what do you do? It's so much more than playing the in instrument. And it's years and years and years and years of trying to perfect and make things quicker, especially if you don't have a team um, with you. And I don't know, Dylan may have a whole uh, man man manager behind him booking his shows. And wait, Ted, I think Ted has a whole manager behind him <laughs> booking all of his shows. <laughs> yeah, I wish, we're trying to get like, like that. Thank you for your questions. I hope that we educated you and gave you some tips on, or just information on how mu musicians work, how the park service work, and how the, we play together. So let's get back to speaking this language and going down some, some more of these streets. Like I said, before we stopped the music, talked about how Bill Street kind of um, reflects or resembles a certain street down here in New Orleans. You might want to take a guess what that street may be. Anyone? Bourbon, exactly. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. right here or drive down to New Orleans. You got it on two and four. Uh -huh. That city sure is pretty. Historic scene. I'll take you. Maybe I'll just parade you down Bourbon Street. We'll go to the hot spots. Meet all the
driving down, he's going down to New, or New Orleans. Oh, that city, the show is pretty. Whole lot of, whole lot of historic scenes. I'll take you, I just might parade you down on Bourbon Street. We'll go to the hot spots. All the big shots down on Bourbon Street We'll go, we'll go to the hot spots Meet all the big shots down on Bourbon Street So that's Bourbon Street for you. And I'm going to take a quick break and let Katie Rogers be featured on this next tune called Canal Street Blues. Thank you. 
Once again, Katie Rogers, everyone. So we're down to our two last songs. And so you may think when you go back home and you go back to your regular places, that's not like New Orleans, you may think, hmm, I sure do miss New Orleans. <laughs> All right, and this is the tune, Do You Know What It Means to Miss New Orleans?
Some of these songs are my first time singing them. Oh my goodness. And I need to go back and learn them. <laughs> Y'all shouldn't know that. I, I, I did the non, the musician thing that you shouldn't do. I broke a rule. Oh my goodness. Shame on me, bad park ranger. Um, but we have one more song to sing you out with. And before we go, I just want to. Take care of some business. Our site, the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, is located at 916 North Peters. That's 916 North Peters, right near uh, WWOZ radio station. We have programs, again, for the rest of the week, always at 2 p.m. and Ranger Talks at 10. Follow us on social media at NOLA Jazz NHP. That's on Instagram, Facebook, and other things. I think it's Twitter. And one last thing that I'm forgetting, there is a five o'clock show for the New Orleans Jazz Museum. And again, we want to talk, uh, reintroduce the band, Dylan Torrance on guitar. <laughs> Ted Long on bass. Hunter Miles Davis on drums. Katie Rogers on trumpet and vocals and flugelhorn. I myself, I'm Jay Perdue. Thank you for coming through. Thank you. And we're so delighted to send, send you off with the song titled Going Back Home to New Orleans. Um, old song, and it's one of those songs that you just want to have fun with. So I may point out to you and tell you to do a solo.
coming through. Oh, we're going back home. Thank y'all, see y'all next time, bye-bye.